Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 7.4 two-tailed chess. 7.4 represents chapter 7, section 4 for Pearson A-level Maths Applied Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. A two-tailed test is of the form H0 P equal H1 P not equal. H0 is called the null hypothesis, H1 is called the alternative hypothesis. It is used to check for a change in the proportion P. Now, some of the key words that you need to look out for in order to identify a two-tailed test includes Number one, change. Number two, altered. Number three, different. If capital X takes on a binomial distribution with fixed number of trials n and fixed probability p, and lowercase x is the observed value, then if lowercase x is less than the expected value of capital X, which is given by np, n multiplied by p, then we must find probability capital X is less than or equal to lowercase x. If lowercase x is greater than the expected value of capital X, which is given by n times p, then in this scenario, we're working out probability capital X is greater than or equal to lowercase x. Now, over here, we've got less than. This corresponds to less than or equal to. Over here, we've got greater than. This corresponds to greater than or equal to. For a two-tailed test, we must take the significance level and we divide by 2. If the probability that you've calculated is greater than the significance level, we must accept H0, reject H1. If the probability that you've calculated is less than the significance level, we must reject H0, accept H1. Let's have a look at another scenario. If the observed value, which is a lowercase x, falls inside the critical region, then we reject H0, accept H1. If the observed value lowercase x does not fall inside the critical region, we accept H0, reject H1. So these are your key facts. We also know that the actual significance level is given by the probability of the critical region. These are the key facts of 7.4 two-toed test. I'm going to be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. Over a period of time, Agenfa has discovered that the carrots that she grows have a 25% chance of being longer than seven centimeter. She tries a new type of fertilizer, in a random sample of 30 carrots, 13 are longer than 7 cm. Again, the claims that the new fertilizer has changed. Keyword, changed. That word over there helps us identify that over here we are looking at a two-tailed test. The probability of a carrot being longer than 7 cm. Test again this claim at the 5% significance level. Let's have a look at the solution. Now, step number one is to define the test statistic. Okay, so we are going to define the test statistic. Let capital X be the number of carrots with a length more than 7 cm. That is the first step. Step number two, we write down the distribution for X. So X takes on a binomial distribution. We are looking at uh, 30 carrots, so there are 30 trials and a fixed probability p, where p is assumed to be 25%. So we're looking at 0 0.25. Now, step number three, we are going to define our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. So step number three, we've got h0. This is uh, the proportion that we assume to be correct. So p is equal to 0 0.25. h1. The alternative hypothesis, we are assuming that the proportion has changed. So in H1, we've got P not equal to 0 0.25. That is the end of step 3. Let's have a look at step 4. Now, in a random sample of 30 carats, 13 are longer than 7 cm. So the lowercase x in this scenario is 13. That is the observed number of carats that are longer than 7 cm. Now, this one over here is greater than the expected value of the random variable x, which is calculated by taking 30 and multiplying by 0 0.25. This is equal to 7.5. Now, since we have 30 is greater than 7.5, we are going to be calculating probability capital X is that corresponds to greater than or equal to 30. This is the probability that we are now going to calculate in step 5. So we've got step 5. We are after probability capital X is greater than or equal to 13. Now we can't use the binomial CD function as of yet because we've got greater than or equal to. 
we need to write this probability of the form so that we are now introducing less than or equal to. So this probability is the same as writing 1 minus probability x is less than 13. 13 is included here. You do not include 13 here. Now this in turn is rewritten as 1 minus probability um, x is less than or equal to 12. This probability here, you can calculate it using binomial CD. Okay, so now we are allowed to use binomial CD. In our class with calculator, the capital N, the sample size is 30. The P, the fixed probability is 0 0.25. And the lowercase x, we take it to be 12. So if I use my class with calculator, I've got 1 minus this probability, which is equal to 0 0.9784. So if I subtract these two, I get 0 0.0216. Now 0 0.0216, we're going to compare that with the significance level divided by 2. So our significance level is 5%. We divide that by 2, that will be 2.5%. This is equivalent to 0 0.025. This probability is less than 0 0.025. So in this scenario, we're going to reject H0, but accept H1. So we are accepting the claim that the proportion is different. So there is sufficient evidence in our conclusion. So in step number six, we can write down a conclusion using the wording, there is sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level that the, we can use the wording in the question to finish off the conclusion, the new fertilizer Our conclusion has to be in context, has changed the probability um, of a carrot being longer than seven centimeter. And that's the end of the solution. Now, let's have a look at some variations. In the examination, if your observed value was less than the expected value, then over here, what will change is that instead of using greater than or equal to, you will use less than or equal to. So that there is your variation. This completes exam style question one. Let's have a look at exam style question two. A dentist knows from past records that 10% of customers arrive late for their appointment. A new manager believes that there has been a change, so that word there indicates a two-tail test in the proportion of customers who arrive late for their appointments. A random sample of 50 of the dentist's customers is taken. Part A, write down a suitable null and alternative hypothesis. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. Firstly, I'm going to define my test statistic. Let x be the number of patients who arrive late for their appointment. So we have that x takes on a binomial distribution. In this scenario, we're looking at 50 patients. So the sample size is 50. And the fixed probability is p. We are assuming that p is equal 10%, which is 0 0.1. Now, the null hypothesis is what you assume to be correct. So H0 in this scenario will be P equals 0 0.1. H1 is what you're trying to test. We are trying to test if the proportion P has changed. So H1 will be P not equal to 0 0.1. Part B, using a 5% level of significance, find the critical region. So now we're going to find the critical region. Let's start off with the lower critical region. Shorthand LCR. This is for P is less than 0 
Okay, so let's have a look at the lower critical region. Let C1 be the lower critical value. Okay, since we have less than, we do the opposite of less than, we take the largest value for C1. So take largest value of C1 such that probability x is, so we use a less than or equal to, less than or equal to C1 has to be less than the significance level divided by 2. So we've got 5% significance level, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5%, which is 0 0.025. Okay, so we can use the binomial cumulative distribution function table to work out lowercase x. That corresponds to this condition over here. So that lowercase x will equal 0. So since lowercase x is equal 0, we know that C1, the first critical value, is 0. Hence, the lower critical region will be of the form x is less than or equal 0. But x is the number of patients. We can't have a negative number of patients. So x is less than or equal to 0 can be rewritten as x equals 0. Now, let's find the upper critical region, UCR, shorthand upper critical region. This corresponds to P is greater than 0 0.1. Okay, so now we're going to let C2 be the upper critical value. Since we have greater than over here, we're going to do the opposite. We want the take opposite of greater than is smaller than. So take the smallest value C2 such that probability X is, we've got greater than over here, so we will use greater than or equal C2 is less than 0 0.025. Now, we can't use the binomial cumulative distribution function table as of yet because we've got greater than or equal to. Now, if you look at my video 7.3, I've shown that this can be rewritten as probability x is less than or equal c2 minus 1, which is greater than 0 0.975. Okay, so we are trying to work out the lowercase x value such that this condition is satisfied. So using the binomial cumulative distribution function table, we get that lowercase x is equal 9. So if lowercase x is equal 9, we have that C2 minus 1 is equal 9, hence C2 is equal 10. So the upper critical region will therefore be of the form x is greater than or equal to 10. So all in all, we have x equal 0 or x is greater than or equal to 10 as our critical region. That there is the solution to part B of the question. Let's have a look at part C and part D of the exam style question 2. Part C, find the actual significance level of the test. So the actual significance level, shorthand ASL, is equal probability of the critical region. So it will be probability x equals 0 or x is greater than or equal to 10. Because these are mutually exclusive events, you can calculate the probability of each individual and then add it together. So we've got probability x equals 0 plus probability x is greater than or equal 10. Now this one over here, you cannot calculate using binomial CD because we've got greater than or equal to. You have to rewrite it so that there's less than or equal to. So we've got the first one as normal, probability x equals 0, plus this one over here would be 1 minus probability x is less than 10. In other words, less than or equal to 9. Okay, so we can calculate this one here using binomial CD functions. So we would substitute capital N equal, uh, we've got 50 trials, fixed probability P 0 0.1, and lowercase x in this scenario, it is 9. So using the binomial CD function, this particular probability will now be 
that one there would be 0 0.9755. Okay, so we calculate probability x equals 0 using binomial PD. So if I calculate that probability, probability x equals 0 using binomial PD with capital N being 50, P equals 0 0.1, and lowercase x equals 0. We get that this over here using binomial PD is basically 0 0.0052 plus 1, take away 0 0.9755. Okay, so if I put this into my calculator, I get 0 0.0297. Times by 100, we get the actual significance level as a percentage. That would be 2.97%. Okay, this completes part C of the exam style question. Part D, um, the manager observes that 15 of the 50 customers arrive late for their appointment. Comment on the manager's belief with reference to your answer in part B. Now, what we notice is that 15, the observed number of patients that arrive late, 15 is actually greater than 10. Hence, falls inside the upper critical region. Let's go back to our key fact. If your observed value falls inside the critical region, Reject H0, accept H1. So we reject H0, accept H1. So if we're accepting H1, we are accepting that the proportion P has changed. So we write there is sufficient evidence in our conclusion. There is sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level that the proportion of patients that arrive late has indeed changed. This completes part D of the exam style question two and overall this exam style question. If you found this teaching video useful, Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.